Hi, I'm Jason Doust, and on behalf of the good people at the International Art of Bowling, I'd like to present to you on Oil Transition, entitled The Change You're Looking For. First off, let's start with the basic stuff. What is oil? Oil is an oil-based conditioner used on bowling lanes, and it's, it's not just oil, it contains a great many things, and it's got a highly complex chemistry. Oil even has a use-by date. Why do we use oil at all? You know, why is it there? And the, the first and foremost reason for oil is not as a lot of people think to make the lanes playable, but in fact to protect the bowling lanes. Oil is there to protect bowling lanes from bowling balls, pure and simple. But of course, it's what we use to control the playing environment on the bowling lane. It allows us to make the bowling lane harder or easier as required. And it allows us to change the conditioning with the seasons, because it's done with liquids and absolute control of oil does not exist yet. And because absolute control doesn't exist, we have to adjust. And when I say we, I mean all of us. I mean, my name is literally an anagram of adjust soon, so I've got to adjust too. Common thing you'll hear at league or at a tournament is that the lanes didn't play the same. Well, they didn't play the same quite simply because everything that a lane is dressed with or cleaned with is a liquid. And liquids are variable and they move around. And oil, to make it more interesting, is moved and removed by bowling balls. There are so many variables regarding oil. Temperature and humidity are two big and obvious ones. Humidity in particular affects the efficiency of washing and oiling a bowling lane, and it affects the way the oil moves around on the lane. There are also surface variables and many other things that affect how a lane plays, but today we're going to talk about oil. So if it's so complicated, this is a very good question my dad asks me all the time, why not just bowl a straight ball? And you know, when you think about it and go to first principles, it's a good question. Why don't we just bowl a straight ball? And the answer, as I tell my dad regularly, is that the maximum weight of a ball is 16 pounds, and the minimum weight of a pin is 3 pounds 6 ounces. So if you're trying to knock down 10 pins, the minimum you're facing is 33 and 3 quarter pounds. So with more than twice your weight in bowling balls in pins, you're going to need help. And when you need help, well, call in men of physics, men of science. But don't worry, we're not going to get all mathematical on you here. I'm just going to talk about if we need to knock over 10 pins that weigh so much more than our ball, and they're going to make our ball deflect, we need to reduce that deflection. And that's where the hooking ball comes in. The hooking ball helps you, and it helps you by increasing your entry angle. It helps by reducing your deflection off the pins, which in turn increases your pin carry. That is, the hooking ball gets more strikes. The downside is, the hooking ball is harder to control. And that's because we need to find the right amount of friction to control that hooking ball. That pesky hook can be a bit of a problem from time to time. And that's where we bring oil patterns into the equation. Somebody worked out a long time ago that if you placed more oil in the centre of the lane, because that's where most people played, then you not only protected that part of the lane better, but you made the lanes a little bit easier to play. You could open up a little bit of area. And if we look at the five patterns on this on the screen here, the pattern on the left is a, a typical house shot. That's Easy Street by Kegel. And moving to the right, we go through various lengths and various difficulties. To the right-hand side is the US Open pattern, which is dead flat and extremely difficult. But for today, we're going to look at the house shot. And the reason I'm going to look at the house shot is that everyone's familiar with it, and it's the, it's the place where we all learn, and it's a good place to start. The house shot has a blender or an edge to it, you can see where there are different shades of blue on the graph there. And that blender edge provides a bit of miss area and makes it easy to hit the pocket. And the reason for that is, with oil in the centre of the lane and a bit of dry area to the outside of the lane, that the bowling ball has a little bit of hold area if we miss inside and a little bit of swing area if we miss outside. But even a shot like this, a relatively easy shot, still changes as people bowl on it. And that's because oil, as I said before, is moved and oil is removed and that changes the way the lane plays. Let's take a look at that, starting with oil moving. Now when oil is moved on the pattern, there's our pattern laid out on the bowling lane, what used to happen in the old days is that the oil would streak or carry down, and oil would be moved from the front to the back of the lane. This still happens a little bit, so I'm going to cover it here briefly. And this is where bowling balls streak the oil, they pick the oil up from the front of the lane, and they move it down the lane as they travel. And the oil moves from the front to the mid lane towards the pins. It can even streak beyond the end of the pattern. And so what happens now is that little spot that I've drawn in yellow is where the oil would get moved into from people bowling before it, and you can see it goes a little bit past the end of the pattern. So in that part of the lane, 
the pattern actually gets a little bit longer. And this means that we've got a little bit less friction because we've got less back end for the ball to hook in. Now when this happens, the symptoms are that the ball simply skids too far. The ball loses grip and it doesn't drive on impact. It bounces off the pins, resulting in flat hits. And carry down is generally caused by people throwing polyester balls or urethane balls or uh, old reactive balls that are clogged with oil. There's probably some guy in your league that's still throwing a coup to C from 1994 and swears it's the greatest ball ever. He's probably contributing to carry down. And another big factor is the climate. Humidity is a big one. If it's teeming with rain, often you will see more carry down in a bowling centre because the air conditioning simply can't keep up. Remember, everything on the bowling lane is liquid. High humidity means that liquid can move around a little bit more. The solution to carry down, well, the pattern's a little bit longer there, is that we want to move into a little bit more friction. And you can see I've drawn my little yellow ball track line outside where that bit of oil is now. And that's a little parallel move. That would be a, a two and two we would refer to that as. And that means you're moving two boards with your feet and two boards with your eyes. And that will vary from house to house. Please don't take any numbers today as gospel. They're all indicative. And when I say out, I mean towards the outside of the lane, towards the gutter. For a right-handed bowler, that means we move to the right. For a left-handed bowler, we move to the left. That little wiggle spot that you had before, the little yellow line to the inside there, uh, has now become a bit of hold area to the left. That problem has become a solution. But beware, remember at the start of this little section I said, this is what used to happen. These days, things are a little bit different. These days, modern reactive bowling balls actually remove the oil from the lane, from the heads and especially from the mid lane where the oil gets thinner. Where I had a yellow line drawn before, there's now a red line, and that red line indicates where oil has been removed. What happens then is that if you stay on the same spot, your ball can read the lane a little bit too early, and the rotation that you've created from your release is spent up too soon. The ball straightens up, and there's no hook left in the ball at the back of the lane. And this is a tricky thing, because this can look like carry down. It can look like there's oil down the lane, when in fact your ball is simply rotated early. It's a little more complicated than carry down to understand, but I would like you to get your head around this concept. It's very important. So in fact, sometimes when you see the ball not finishing at the back, the right move may actually be to move in into a little bit more oil so the ball retains its rotation off your release. It's usually a small move. And then the ball can actually turn the corner where you want it to, down the back of the lane. But we can't be sure that this is what's happening in your particular scenario, and that's mainly because we're not there. So what IAB recommends you do is have some practice games, and when you see this change, play around with it. See if the move works better if you move left or you move right. Give it a go. See what you learn. When oil is removed more savagely than this, though, we see head depletion, also known as burn, this is where the reactive bowling balls are really ripping in and sponging oil off, off that spot. So again, the balls are rolling over a part of the lane and we're getting a red line where the oil is removed. When this is more definitive, we actually see that the pattern gets shorter in that place. And this means that we have earlier friction to deal with. Now, early friction usually presents by the ball gripping the lane too early. What you'll see uh, generally, uh, you may get a warning from your centre, such as leaving a 4-pin out of the pocket for a right-hander or a 6-pin for a left-hander, but it could be worse. It could be a 4-9 or a 4-6 or something nasty like that. And the usual culprit of this is, is people throwing heavily sanded bowling balls or people with high rev rates, because those two things remove oil much more quickly. So the solution to this, when you see early friction, is to move into more oil. Now again, it's usually a little move in, although it varies. If your rev rate is higher, the move may be bigger. And it's a parallel move. We're actually opening our angle. So we move, say, two and one. So two with our feet, one with our eyes, or four with our feet, two with our eyes. Notice that we're usually working in a, in a factor of two, twice as far with the feet as with the eyes. And when I say in, I mean away from the gutter towards the center of the lane. So for a right-hander, you're moving left. For a left-hander, you're moving right. And when we make this move, that early hook spot that was a problem becomes some swing area. The ball starts to bounce back off it. Again, with the right move, problems become solutions. So with all these problems becoming solutions, you can see that lane transition is actually the key to opening up some area on the bowling lane. 
lane transition is the change you're looking for. So let's talk about the pattern of transition, or the way a pattern transitions. Now most changes happen on the blend of a pattern. You can see I've put the pattern on the lane and I've drawn two ellipses there around where the blend is. And that's the point where the wet and the dry meet and there is a change in the amount of fr friction that's available. More scoring opportunities exist on this part of the lane, consequently it has the most play. And this is also true at the end of the pattern where the pattern gets thinner. This part of the lane gives us the most area, the most people will be playing in it. And where you see play, you see change. And remember, where you see change, you see opportunity. And this can be a good thing, because this can create additional room, you can create a bit more hook or swing area if the lanes dry out a bit, or if the lanes carry down a bit, you can have a little bit of hold area, so you can move out and get a, take advantage of that. It depends what happens on the night, and who you're bowling with, and how they play it. But you will notice at league that big scores often come late, and that's mainly because the lanes have settled, just like the players, and the back end reaction gets a little bit more smoother and more predictable, and that's usually because there's a little bit more hold area down lane. And sometimes the heads have opened up, and that is to say that the players have burnt a hole through the front of the lane and they've created a bit more of a hook spot, and they can get inside and bounce off that and create some big numbers. So make sure that your eyes are open and that you can benefit from that change and that you follow the lane's instructions, because most bowling lanes will tell you where to play, and you've got to make sure that you're alert and you're listening to what they're telling you. And that is to say that you should follow that blend. As that blend moves in when people bowl on it, you should move in when they hook early. But be on the lookout for your bowling ball burning up early. Remember, carry down is, oil being, is not so much oil being transported down the lane as oil being lifted off the front of the lane these days. And remember, that when they, if they do skid too far, if you do see old-fashioned carry-down, usually from old-fashioned bowling balls, remember to move out, follow it out, and go with the flow. As the lanes change, you can change with them, and you can change your line, which we've just covered quite extensively by making line changes to the left, to the right, in and out. You can change your release to change the way the ball turns the corner. You can even change your bowling ball to create an entirely different reaction. And you can change your speed. I won't be covering speed changes today. It's a little bit more complex and we really don't have the time in this presentation. Talking about release changes, here's a, here's a shot here of my basic release. It's about a 45 degree release. It gives me a good starting point. It provides sufficient skid and hook and a good entry angle. It's, you know, inverted commas normal. If I, however, see the lanes hooking earlier and I need the ball to get further down the lane, I can apply more rotation to create later roll. This way the ball is skidding sideways more, it creates more skid, and usually a little more hook off the back of it. And it's a good release change when I want to move inwards, because it creates more entry angle. It does come at a price though, because it can skid too far if I've made the wrong move, and it can be too angular if the lanes are really back ending hard. I can leave myself a lot of nasty splits like this. So I have to know what I'm doing, it's about knowing my game and knowing what's happening in front of me. If I want to move outwards, I need to create less rotation. I want the ball to face up sooner and create a smoother back end. So an earlier roll release, when my hand is behind the ball like this, allows the ball to roll more end over end and lets, gives me a smoother reaction off the back and is excellent for playing the outside parts of the lane. The downside of this though, is that that end over end roll can sometimes result in, re in reduced pin carry and it's more prone to roll out. Now roll out is where your ball has accelerated and can accelerate no more. It's read the friction, there's no more core tilt left in the ball, and the ball simply runs out of puff. You'll know when your ball's rolled out, it runs out of hook, and it hits very badly indeed. Ball changes are another tool in your arsenal. An earlier hooking ball is very handy if your current ball won't make it to, won't make it to the pocket, it won't turn the corner and get there anymore. Likewise, if the lanes are hooking like crazy, or your ball is burning up and won't carry anymore, sometimes a later hooking ball can be the answer because a later hooking ball will stay straighter and it'll let you hold the pocket better. So the question is, do you make a release change or a ball change? Well the answer, I believe, lies in how big is the change you need. If you need to make a small change, let's say you've been hitting the pocket and you're starting to leave 10 pins or you're starting to leave 4 pins, then maybe you just need a little line change, maybe a release change. So for a small change like that, I prefer to use a release or line change, and this is coming from a guy who owns a pro shop, you know, I benefit from selling bowling balls, so believe me on this one, I have nothing to gain. When however you need to make a big change, 
that's when a ball change can be a very good option to have. A ball change is a big change, it's very handy, but remember it's not always the best first option. It's a very good option, but it's a big option. So now you know. You know a little bit more about lane oil. You, know, you now understand more about why lanes change and the basics of how they change. And that's because oil is moved and removed. You've also been made aware now of the carry down trap. What you see as carry down may actually be oil being removed off the lane. Go get some practice and find out if your centre actually works better on carry down if you move left or move right. It's worth knowing. You now know some techniques to handle transition. You can change lines, you can change releases, and you can make ball changes. And you can see the changes as they occur. And even better still, once you've seen enough changes, you start to remember how they happen. And that means that you can start to predict what's coming. And when you can predict what's coming, you can take control of the situation. So thank you for your time. This presentation was brought to you by Clean Edge, the only Australian-made, USB-C approved cleaner on the market. I'm Jason Doust. And on behalf of Deandra, Ron, and Jason, and all the good folk at the International Art of Bowling, thank you for your time. And remember, smarter bowlers become better bowlers. <laughs>